Hello, everybody, and welcome to Quilt Club for the month Hello. of May. Sorry. And we're enjoying in beautiful May weather today. We certainly are. It's we, so nice outside. We thought we might shoot the video outside, and then we went outside and looked around, and it was really windy, and we figured, no, it's not going to happen. No, it's not going to work out. So I better step back. To yes, it. we had, unfortunately, a little COVID scare. I saw my daughter on the weekend, Saturday, and she has COVID today, so Cynthia and I are definitely... We're being careful. <laughs> keeping our distance. Yes, I tested <clears throat> negative, but... So crossed. you'll see us popping in and out of the screen. For sure. Okay, so we will, oh, we have an we announcement. We're going to do some housekeeping. housekeeping. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to hear you. Oh, your... let me take this off. Here we're we keeping go. our six feet distance. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, we um, we talked a lot about starting classes, and classes yeah. have started, which we're thrilled about. And we thought that we would start $10 quilt or quilt club in the classroom, but we have decided for a variety of reasons that we are going to postpone that to the start of the new program, which will be September. And we apologize if anybody was all excited about coming I think there's a few of you in. that were a little excited about coming yeah, in. But so it's just... we're, we're sorry about that. And we love doing it in person too, but oh, the logistics of making that happen were a little overwhelming. So, so we're going to leave that until September. I have a funny story to tell you. Okay. <laughs> Cynthia was telling me this yes, morning. Yes, I was telling you my funny story. Can you tell you the funny, okay, it'll be a double, a tag team funny okay, story. Okay, a tag team funny story. So my part of the funny story is <laughs> we were we were away at Point Pile this past weekend. Uh, we go down for the bird festival. So my husband and I are bird watchers of an amateurish nature. He takes pictures. I look through my binoculars. It's all great. And we were so dazzled because there was a guy, a young guy, who managed to identify one of the little warblers by its song. So he heard a bird song and knew that it was a Cape May warbler and then he looked around and he found it. And of course all of us other groupies got to take the pictures and see That's through our cool. binoculars and we saw this fantastic little bird and I, I said, oh, oh I, <coughs> I'd love to be able to do that. I don't know any of the bird songs. And my husband suggested, well, we could get some tapes for that and you could <laughs> learn their song. So I howled with laughter and said, uh, told my daughter about it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she loved the story too. Yes. But then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so after Cynthia made fun of Paul for, yeah, what are you going to play your tape What are you going to play your tape on? on? <laughs> you got to buy a cassette deck, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we were playing around with, with filming, recording our video this morning, et cetera. Yeah. And Cynthia said, we're going to stop the tape now. <laughs> I thought that. So that was a good I guess bit. we're obviously that old married couple that has been with each other for too long. Oh, that's awesome. Anyway. Okay, we'll get yeah. on with the, the okay. show. So I am going to start first with my. Okay, and I will step out of the screen so I can step get into to the center screen. stage. So we have this very cool product. It is called Bowl Cozy Pre Cut Batting. We have two sizes. I'm not sure how well you can see it. I'll take one piece up. We have the little 10 inch size. And we have, I believe it's a 15 inch size. So this is pre-cut batting into the perfect shape and perfect size that you need to make bowl cozies. And what's a bowl cozy you say? This is a bowl cozy. I've got a bowl in there. Take that out. So this is a bowl cozy. This is the smaller size. And the purpose of this bowl cozy is for when you're microwaving something. You put the bowl into the cozy, put it into the microwave, heat your food, and then you're not gonna burn your fingers on the way out. And if there are any little slips or drops or anything like that, your bowl cozy is going to absorb them. And because you've made it out of cotton fabric and cotton batting, you can wash them. And- She's got the cutest fabric ever, yes, by the way. Yes, it's a little gingham with little ladybugs. We have both in stock. <laughs> Um, and that's what I was going to say too, that they're just cute. My daughter just was taken with them. She wants to make them. I'm not sure for what she envisions, like putting them on the table as you're eating and whatnot, just to add a little color and, and pop to the table. They also come in the large size. This guy, as I said, is very large. You can fit a dinner plate in this one. So same premise. You can put it in the microwave. That's going to vary, of course, depending on your dinner plate, but this particular dinner pl plate fits right in it, and you could carry it like this out to the deck to serve something in it, or just across the room to your uh, lazy daughter on the couch waiting for her food. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to protect your hands, and it looks really cute at the same time. And they were so fun to make. You can also put in like a pasta bowl size that just fits right in there, too. And then you've got your plate, and you're not going to burn your fingers, and you're not going to make a mess. 
Julia also suggested that it would be spectacular for ice cream. If you're eating your ice cream out of a bowl, I think a lot of people eat out of the container these days, but if you're eating out of the bowl, you can, because the Hagen dazs comes in such tiny containers. Why, Why would you dirty a exactly. bowl? <laughs> but it's going to keep your hands warm. You're not going to get your hands cold when you're eating the ice cream. So those are melt the ice cream. Ah, oh, good one. And I will now show you a quick demo of how they go together. You take two pieces of your batting and two pieces of fabric and you quilt them together. And this is a great opportunity for you to practice your quilting. I cheated and I just went crisscross because that was easy for to do. But if you want to spend a little more time quilting, you can do so. After you get that done, you have to make the darts. So you've got it like this. You just fold it right sides together, the little indent, and you make four, sorry, four darts on each corner or each center and it's so quick and so easy to do so you start your dart and you try to just ease it in do a back stitch and then straight along I'm looking at it myself not showing it to the camera and just do a straight along the seam and when you're done that you sew both sides together and flip it around and you end up with your bowl cozy so it's very straightforward fun to do quick to make as I mentioned we've got the large bowl cozy size We've got the small bow cozy size. Try to say that five times fast. And we also have the jelly roll bowl cozy template. So what this is for is to make this size and you can cut your own batting. You wanna make sure you get the warm tater batting mm -hmm. because you don't wanna put anything in the microwave that's not microwave safe and the warm tater batting is absolutely microwave safe and so you can see here it's got them so don't use your scraps in no this, this is not for scraps unless you don't plan to use it in the microwave if you're just going to use it as a holder for after True. you microwave something or whatever you want to use it for but if you're putting it in the microwave it needs to be the cotton batting specific cotton batting so you mark your darts and it's got the curved corners and you can make all of the um bowl cozies that you want they make a fantastic gift so that is the bowl cozy. I will now clean up my mask. Great idea. And step out of the way. Okay, I've lost my mask. I got it. Okay, you're up, <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. We're a we professional have, show. We've got yes, we have, we're a professional show. Can you take your mess out of the way now? Here you go. Thank you, ma'am. It's carried away in my bowl cozy. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I say, professionalism you know. reaches new heights. No, she's throwing your product on the floor. Um, okay, so I'm going to be telling you about a tool that we have had for a while, but we haven't featured for a while. This is called the Pineapple Trim Tool. This is a new Creative Grids ruler, or a Creative Grids ruler. It has a gazillion markings on it that you'll be able to see more easily in the demo that's going to follow very soon. Um, it comes with the little leaflet of instructions. So you've got all the information on here about how to make the pineapple blocks. You've got lots of information on there. There's also a QR code you can scan if you're familiar with, if you're tech savvy like me and my tapes. Um, or you can uh, just Google uh, pineapple trim tool and you'll come up with all sorts of demos, including this one. Um, and it will refresh your memory if you forget how to do it. So what you're making is blocks like this. This is a pineapple block. And you can see you add on multiple rounds and you can make beautiful quilts when you put blocks together like this. And I'll show you some samples in a minute. Uh, we're going to pause here and cut out to our little demo video and I'll be back in two seconds. Hi there, I'm demoing the pineapple trim tool from Creative Grids today. This was designed by Jean Ann Wright and it comes in a number of different sizes. I'm gonna be showing you the demo with the largest size just for ease of seeing everything. This one will do six inch, eight inch or 10 inch pineapple blocks, which you can then incorporate in all sorts of different designs. Um, you'll see it has a ton of markings on it, uh, but all the information is on the ruler to help you make the blocks and trim them down to the right size. So you'll see there's both white markings and black markings. The black markings, there's a lot of squares here. 
They are for even rounds as you're building your pineapple block. You start with a precise two and a half inch square in the center, and that's the only thing you have to cut precisely. The rest of the strips that you use, um, it's a bit flexible on what size. The white markings on the ruler are used for squaring up your odd numbered rounds. So we have the centering square here for round one, and then this line here, is a 45 degree angle trim line and that is for rounds three five and seven the number of rounds you do depends on the size of the block that you're going to make and then you use the outside edges of the ruler to square up your finished block um, so i'm going to start with my precise two and a half inch square which i have cut out using my regular ruler and then I'm going to add strips to that to build round one. So the strips, it says on your ruler here, cut strips at least one and three quarter inches wide. So they have to be at least that wide, but they don't have to be exact. So you can have longer strips, as long as your strip is long enough to um, cover that distance of the previous round, that's going to be adequate. The outside edge of the strips can be raggedy. It doesn't matter because you're going to be trimming that away. So I've sewn these on, uh, the two strips on this side, press them open, and then my two strips on the outside, and I end up with a bit like looks like that. Then I'm going to go to my ruler, and I'm looking for the first round. And here it's labeled centering square round one, a uh, white square for an odd uh an odd round. So I'm going to center that square on the square that is in my center of my block and that gives me the trim line right there for the first edge. Then I'm going to turn the ruler, center it again and trim off that corner and so on for the other two corners. And what I end up with is a unit that looks like this. So there I've got my first round on there. All the edges are trimmed. I've got a perfect quarter at those corners and I'm ready for round two. So round two, I am going to be adding on some additional strips. So I just sew them on exactly the way I did with the previous. You can see I've got my center round in the middle there. I've added a strip on this side, a strip on this side, press those open. And then I've added my two strips on the remaining two sides and press those open. So my back looks like that neat and tidy, and I'm ready to trim up my second round. So again, I go back to my ruler, and I'm looking for centering square round two. So here I've got centering square round two, four, six, and eight, and that allows me to do my remaining even rounds. So what I'm gonna do is take this again. I'm going to find my center square here, line this up, and this is going to let me trim two of the sides remaining. So I trim those off. Then I'm going to turn my square or turn my ruler, whichever. Line it up again. Center is lined up perfectly. And I trim off the remaining two sides. And what I end up with is the next round. So it's, it, you can see it building already. It's, it's a really fun process and it um, makes a gorgeous block. Now, the next round that I'm going to be adding is round three. And, sorry, getting rid of a little bit. And you can see I have added my strips to the outside edges. These don't actually even meet in the corners, and that doesn't matter because you're going to be trimming all that stuff away. You only need to have enough fabric to cover those sides. And then I'm going to go back to my ruler, and this is where we do deviate. The line here, the white line, we know we use that for the odd rounds, but it's labeled 45 angle trim line rounds three, five, and seven. This is round three. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna line up that angle along the seam line from the previous round. So that is the seam line that I'm lining it up along. Uh, there are two dotted lines that extend out uh, perpendicular to that trim line, you use those as guidelines to help you position it accurately so that it's centered on your square in the middle. And I'm going to then trim off that line. Then I can turn my ruler and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to line up the line, line up the dotted lines on the center square and trim off the next corner. 
Then I'm going to repeat that on the remaining two corners. So what I end up with after I've done that trimming is the end of round three. And then I'm going to build the next one and do the cutting line for round four. Round five, I'll use the trim line. Round six, I'll use the square that's black, marked round six, and so on to make as many uh, rounds as I want. Ultimately, you end up with something that looks like this. Pretend, pretend those corners aren't on there. Um, they give you instructions on to make rabbit ears. And basically what you're gonna be taking is a two and a half inch by four and a half inch piece, approximate size, it can be bigger. And you're going to add that on the corner. So a quarter inch seam, and when I turn that out, I'll basically have, they call them rabbit ears, I'm not quite sure why. They don't look very rabbity to me. Um, and I would have done that in all four corners. So I will have these little ears on the corners here. And then I'm going to use the lines on the edge there just to trim up my block. So I'll be cutting it like that and like that. And that's how I trim down that final corner to get a finished block that looks like this. So it makes an absolutely gorgeous block. You can make it in all sorts of different sizes. Um, this is the large pineapple trim tool. As I say, it makes six, eight, and 10 inch blocks. We also have though a mini pineapple trim tool. It's exactly the same markings. They're just trunk. So this lets you make blocks that are four inches, five inches and six inches. So you've got gorgeous little blocks using this one. There is also another ruler that we aren't featuring today, but it is available if you wanna order it, that makes skinny pineapples. Um, and those logs are half the width. So you get a very um, PC look, but, but lots of fun as well. Um, the ruler comes with a great instruction sheet. I'm just gonna show you that super quick. So it comes with this instruction sheet. It's got, there's a QR code, which you can scan to link to information. But you can see there's all sorts of information on there about how to make the blocks. Tells you every step of the way. There's also great videos on YouTube. And this video will also be on YouTube. <laughs> it probably is where you're watching it. Um, but you can refer back to it at any time. Um, so we hope you'll have lots of fun making your pineapple blocks and we have lots of patterns from Creative Grids that support that. And we're back. So you have seen how to construct the blocks. The large pineapple trim tool allowed you to make six, eight and 10 inch finished units. The mini trim tool allows you to make four, five and six inch finished units. There is also a skinny log version of the pineapple trim tool, pineapple skinny, I think it's called, that lets you make ones with smaller logs. So if you're interested in that, you can give us a call and ask us about that one. Um, so I've got a, a number of samples to show you. Uh, the first is this one behind us, which is absolutely gorgeous. It uses all batiks, but this is a great one for scraps because you can just use a ton of different fabrics in there. And you can use um, different fabrics in the log. So each round could comprise four different fabrics, um, not the same fabric. So it, it's very cool. You can use tons of different scraps. So this is a cut loose press pattern. There's the one called Tropical Fruit. Um, all these patterns are $4.98 with one exception. And then we have, I've got a couple that we have the actual samples. This one here is called Eat Your Veggies. I'll give you one end. So this is an awesome runner. You could put in as many or as few blocks as you want to um, make it the right size for your table. Let's go closer, but yes. it's showing us as well as it should. There we That's go. That's better. Now you can really see it. And this is just an awesome pattern. It's a great pattern. So they call it Eat Your Veggies because they've used a whole bunch of different fabrics that are veggie related, but you can put any fabrics you want in there. And that's the Eat Your Veggies table runner pattern, again, $4.98. Um, and then we've got some other ones that use the large ruler. I'm just gonna show you these quickly. This one is called Pineapple Point. This one is Pineapple Salsa. Really neat secondary pattern in that one. And then this one is called Flying Pineapple. Also just gorgeous. 
So great patterns. They are all on our website, or you'll see them when you come into the store. The Pineapple Mini makes <laughs> lots I of different little. blocks. You can hold that one up. So that makes these I love really colors. tiny, but so beautiful little blocks. And here is a one that's made in a snail yeah, trail wild. kind of style. Isn't that cool? Um, and it's neat. just the color placement gives you the snail's trail. Because the snail's trail is effectively a pineapple block. And then this one is probably my favorite. This Love is a tote too. bag. And nice. this uses the mini. And you made all these wonderful, wonderful blocks, probably from scraps again. We've just got a whole mixture of bright colors in there. I think that there. was a charm pack back in the day. And it is just awesome. And then it, it, we, it's a lined pattern. So you've got a great shopping bag there. And here's the two. So the one pattern that was the snail's trail is done here as a pineapple, uh, sorry, a pillow or a table runner, but you can just keep adding blocks to make a, a little a crib quilt or a big quilt. And then the pineapple sizzle tote is the bag that I just showed you. And it's an awesome project. Tons of fun to make. Okay, and it does use a, in fact, does use a charm pack. So a charm pack of 45 inch squares is your starting point for the bag. Oh. And the sizzle tote is $5.99. The others are $4.98. Okay. okay. Good turn. The next thing we're going to tell you about, and I think we've told you about this fairly recently, <clears throat> is the Misty Bottle. Why do I keep getting everything that doesn't have a tag on it? I call it the Misty Bottle. I don't know if there's a different name for it or not, but this is for putting your best press in, and it's spectacular. The reason we're doing it again is because at um, recently in retreat, I guess it was, I was sewing and I had my bottle of best press and I was, you know, psh, psh, psh. and on a whim, I said, hey, I need one of those misty bottles. Thank you, said the, yeah. the spray misting bottle. And it's $19.99 less your 20%. And it is worth more than every penny you pay for it. So what this does is when you push it, it's like vacuum locked in there. There is no air that comes out. And you just press a little bit and it delivers a beautiful, even, spread out, lovely bit of best press. So you don't get um, wet marks on your fabric. You just spread it out and it just mists like a like it's a, a continuous spray. It is. You just kind of go, it's, it's so it, nice. Yeah, our movements are right. Yeah, but it's exactly. Yeah. And I hadn't used one before. I talked oh, about it and I understood awesome. it. But not until we went to retreat did I actually try one. Oh, and they're just, I got so jazzed up about it. So we wanted to tell you guys about it. It also um, has this funnel that you can get to go with it. And it doesn't seem like it's that, you know, who needs a funnel to put best press in? <laughs> I need a funnel to put best press in. So it just hooks onto the top. It's got a special little tongue and groove sort of thing and it clicks on like that and then you pour your best press do you no don't mess. No, no mess is no right mess. exactly and then when you're done using it on for the best press you can hook it around the bottle and that just stays put that way and the funnel is 6.99 less 20 percent so although we've talked about these um misty sprays before i can't say enough good things if, about if you it. don't have one you need you one, need one. To get one. <laughs> and if you're not using best press you need to get that too but that's a whole other topic it okay, is. I believe it's your turn. All right, okay. I shall step in as you step out. Okay, so um, this was a product that we couldn't get for a while. This is a little tube of iron cleaner. So it looks like a little tube of hand cream. And the iron cleaner kind of looks like a hand cream. It's a, a white paste. Um, so it, it squeezes out an, a ribbon of white paste like um, but this does the most amazing job cleaning the sole plate of your iron um, if you should get it soiled in any way um, especially when you're using fusibles uh, but even just you know if you've got uh, calcium in your water or anything if your water is hard um, it will build up a bit of scale and it allows you to clean the sole plate beautifully. The, the main thing is, is those glues from the fusibles. It just works like a charm. So you, you take a cotton cloth. You're going to, you can use a piece of flannel or a cotton towel or anything like that. Squeeze a, a bead of the iron cleaner onto the towel and then you iron over it with a hot iron. You have to have the iron set. I believe they're saying to set it on high setting so you're probably going to be putting it at cotton, wool or linen um, and you're going to iron over 
that paste, the iron cleaner paste, on your cotton towel until the sole plate comes clean. And then iron on a clean area of the cloth that doesn't have the, the cleaner on it to remove any residue that uh, should be left on the sole of the iron. But it does an absolutely great job. Well worth uh, having in your, in your stash of supplies. Um, in case you do have a little mishap or you take your iron to retreat and somebody else uses it <laughs> and heaven forbid makes a mess on your beautiful iron. So it's $15.99. This will last you a long time. Um, a little goes a long way, but it's so worth having. It's a great product. Okay. okay, and the last thing we have to tell you about today is the ultimate marking pencil. It's just a regular marking pencil. It feels a bit like wax. Yeah. But it can't be wax, I don't think. So it has a... Um, a film like a crayon or something like a wrapper but then this much has the end and you sharpen it with a, a regular pencil sharpener or a makeup sorry or a makeup um, eyeliner sharpener and so what it does is it obviously marks on fabric because it's a fabric marking pen which I can show you oh, I can't. you need a hard surface here we go so it marks on the fabric and it leaves a nice it's fairly thin line that you can't even see on the film, uh, on the tape. <laughs> <laughs> on the tape. You trust does me. Leave a line. It <laughs> leaves a nice fine line. And then you can just iron it off and it's gone permanently. So it's very handy. I've used a few chalk markers lately. I'm not a big fan of the chalk marker. This one I really like. So last night when I was making the bowl cozies, I used this and it's fantastic. It works really, really well. So um, that is the ultimate marking pencil. And they last quite a while. This is endorsed, if I'm not mistaken, by Sally Borland. Ah, well, if Sally likes it, if then. Sally likes it, then it's good enough for me. I'm sold. And there's someone else that said it was really good too. I can't remember who that was, but the, yeah, it's a few people. Have, oh, Kathy Doll. Kathy Doll loves it too. So okay, Sally Borland and Kathy Doll. Kathy Doll. Two of our illustrious staff. Exactly. For those who you don't know. Yes. All right. Okay. So this month, in order to get your block, ah, this is Shannon's idea, <laughs> not mine. It's a good one though. You have to say, it's a, it's a real tongue twister, you have to say it three times, you have to say red Buick, blue Buick, and you have to repeat it three times. And I'm sure all of you right now are doing it in your head or trying to say it. It is a tongue it's twister. It's a toughie. It's, it's a toughie. To say it so. once is fine, but when you get on the second round, it gets a little difficult. And you have to say it as quickly as you can. And you don't have to say it perfectly as okay, long as you, you try. Okay, you try, then I'll try. Red Buick, blue Buick, red Buick, blue Buick, red Buick. Buick, blue, Buick. Oh, not bad. Ooh. Red Buick, blue, Buick. Red Buick, blue, Buick. <laughs> Red Buick, blue, Buick. <laughs> it's a challenge. It is a challenge. Uh, and we're not trying to make oh, no, you don't have anybody to feel foolish. No, we're not just at trying all. to have some fun. Exactly. So, yeah, if you can't, can't get it out, as long as you try, that's all you have to do. <laughs> Say okay. Red and Blue. Yes. Um, okay, anything else? I, I think, think that's we're it. all good. So um, enjoy the beautiful weather. Enjoy uh, getting out in your garden for a little bit. But yes. leave time for quilting. Absolutely. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.